Here he is, the sun's champion, Earth's defender, one of the sexiest men alive, geophysicist, Stefan Burns. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Stefan Burns. Today, we're talking earthquakes. Specifically, we're looking into something very strange, bizarre, and unexplained, which is the fact that daily earthquake occurrence is decreasing dramatically at this moment in time. It has been for a couple months now, and this is very strange and anomalous if we look at the long-term earthquake record. And so we'll talk about what could be causing this decrease in daily earthquakes, specifically earthquakes magnitude four and greater. And then we'll also talk about the connection that the sun has to the earth as it relates to earthquakes and the connection that galactic cosmic rays have to the Earth as it relates to earthquakes. So that and much more in today's video. Getting right into it, here is our data showing this precipitous drop in daily earthquakes. So we have earthquakes magnitude four and greater from May 1st to August 5th, 2024. I reported on this a couple times now, but this video is dedicated to this topic because the trend has been continuing. And so we see here with May, our daily earthquake frequency was about 35 on average. You know, it's a bit of an oscillation, but very rarely did it drop below 30. And then you see here starting right around July, boom, straight down, a little bit of recovery. And now for August 5th, we had just 12 earthquakes that were magnitude four and greater. And so you can see a pretty clear trend here starting even back in June though July kind of resumed to the mean, but now we're really in a significant dip. And the daily average for the last six years is 30 to 40 earthquakes a day, magnitude four and greater. And this drop in earthquakes gets even more bizarre when you look at a longer time frame. So here we have August 5th, 2018 to August 5th, 2024. We see our daily average is about 35 to 40, like in the last graphic. But if I move over here, there's that drop really very significant. You can see just how significant it is and it's an extended duration too. You see a couple other little areas where the earthquake frequency goes down, but it's just for like a day or two, but this is for more than a month now, very bizarre. We see some of these spikes here are connected to very large earthquakes that rupture and their associated earthquake swarms, causing the number of daily earthquakes greater than magnitude four to go up. But there's that, again, that average about 35 to 40. So what's causing this drop right here? Is it that great G5 geomagnetic storm that we had back in May? Well, potentially, but I checked the historic record for other great geomagnetic storms, notably the Halloween storms of 2003, the great geomagnetic storm that occurred November 20th and 21st of 2003, shortly afterwards. That's really a zone that you would think this could occur if that was a causal effect. And then also the 1989 geomagnetic storms that wiped out power in Quebec. They don't have this earthquake signature where we see this delayed effect and earthquakes go down. And we don't see this across solar cycles either. We do see that solar activity in galactic cosmic ray influences the amount of earthquakes on our planet due to atmospheric interactions but we don't see a super clear correlation. It's only a moderate correlation with solar cycles. Here we have solar minimum in between 24 and 25, right in this zone there. And we see the ascending phase of solar cycle 25. And now we just suddenly get this drop in earthquakes there. So very bizarre. And I really don't have a good explanation for it, but the reason I bring it to your attention is because this is a sign that there are some significant changes happening on our planet because earthquakes are one of these constants, you could say. There's sometimes high magnitude earthquakes that rupture, but there's usually a general background rumble always happening. Faults are maturing, they're reaching critical stress thresholds, and then based on certain atmospheric conditions, that gives them a higher likelihood of finally rupturing. They do that, and then you get the earthquake and our global seismograph stations pick that up and record it in our database. But what we're seeing is that we're having this notable drop in daily earthquakes, magnitude four and greater. And so it's not like these faults have stopped building up seismic energy and stress. They're still doing that. But what's stopping them from finally rupturing and releasing that energy and causing an earthquake? That's the big mystery. That's the big known. 
So the answer may lie with our sun and also with the influences from the cosmos. Let's talk about that. I have linked in the video description a research paper which goes into the connection between earthquakes, solar cycles, and galactic cosmic rays. This was published in 2022. That's the DOI right there, so you can read that. That's where these graphics come from. But what they found, and they also pulled in a lot of data from other research papers looking at earlier solar cycles and earlier time periods like 1900 and 1970, is that there is a negative correlation between solar flux and earthquakes. And so we see here our uh, earthquake frequency per year, and then we see 10.7 centimeter radio flux. And basically, as radio flux goes up, earthquake frequency goes down. And it's a weak negative correlation. It's a, it's a moderate correlation. Uh, so it's, it's you know, significant, but it's not a correlation of one. It's a loose correlation. There's a lot of factors that affect earthquakes. But what we see, and why I'm showing this data, is that that correlation improves and becomes tighter as earthquake magnitude decreases. And so you see here our scale. This is magnitude six earthquakes. They have a correlation that's more like in this point, negative 0.35 range. So they're weakly negative correlated. But then as you go from six to 5.5 to five, the correlation strengthens, which shows that the sun has more of a correlative effect on earthquakes when we're looking at the background kind of daily earthquakes that are occurring magnitude five and lower. The, the stronger the earthquake, the less related it is to direct solar influences because that's caused by a whole bunch of things and they don't happen as frequently. But as it relates to that background rumble, you could say that is more correlated with solar activity, inversely correlated, than, uh, than these higher magnitude earthquakes. So there is a connection between solar activity and earthquakes as solar activity goes up, earthquake frequency goes down. And so we see that weak negative correlation. Uh, this is going for magnitude five. You could imagine that this continues on to magnitude four, though we don't exactly know if that's the case, but we're seeing that right now, at least solar maximum right now. We just had a big jump in sunspot numbers for July and frequency occurrence has gone way down. Now here is another data graphic that may be a clue for understanding why earthquake frequency has gone down so precipitously in the past couple months. We're looking at the number of earthquakes magnitude five and greater per year across time going from 1973 to 2019. And this is correlated with galactic cosmic ray intensity. So the number of galactic cosmic rays coming in. And so what you see here also are solar cycle 21, solar cycle 22, 23, 24, just the ranges for them. So in general, the center of that zone is solar maximum. And we see solar maximum very clearly in our galactic cosmic rays because they take a big dip. They go down a lot when solar activity increases because it pushes these galactic cosmic rays out. They follow magnetic field lines because they're actual particles. And so as the heliosphere strengthens, galactic cosmic rays are routed around the heliosphere and we receive less of them here on Earth. So we see this drop in galactic cosmic rays for solar cycle 21, for 22, 23, Look at how weak solar cycle 24 was. After solar cycle 23, galactic cosmic rays reached a high. They really spiked up there. Earthquakes also reached a high across this entire time frame. Look at the daily occurrence of earthquakes there at the beginning and early ascending phase of solar cycle 24. It's nearly double what it was at the uh, beginning of this. This is 1973. We see it's about a thousand. And then here we see it's greater than 2000. Uh, and this is, you know, maybe like 2010, 11. And then solar cycle 24 maximum occurs. We see earthquake frequency drops, but it stays elevated beyond this normal kind of historic baseline. Before 92.5 earthquakes and greater, they were kind of oscillating around about 1100 or so, 1200 uh, per year. But then we see that this line is higher for the years following for solar cycle 24. And then galactic cosmic rays jumped up again, highly elevated as compared to the normal baseline for solar cycles 21, 22, 23. 
solar cycle 24 was anomalously weak. And so we may be looking at the fact that galactic cosmic rays are a really big driver of earthquake frequency in these lower magnitude ranges. And what happened with that great geomagnetic storm back in May, it's a big four bush decrease. It's such a powerful coronal mass ejection and solar storm. It spreads out and it pushes cosmic rays out of the heliosphere, redirects them, and causes a, a very strong reduction in galactic cosmic rays at that moment in time. And so we've had elevated galactic cosmic ray activity for a while, and now we've had a big drop in that as a result of solar cycle 25. And the way that galactic cosmic rays influence earthquakes is through modification of the atmosphere. Galactic cosmic rays are very highly charged particles and they pierce deep into Earth's atmosphere. They cause these, uh, these precipitation events where they can break many molecular bonds, thousands. And so they interact with different molecules like nitrogen in the troposphere, creating these ions, which can be the seeds for cloud formation. And what they show with earthquakes is that when you have strong pressure changes moving over matured faults, these are faults that are seismically loaded, they have, they're close to their critical stress threshold. When you have these strong weather pressure uh, gradients pass over them, that can cause them to rupture and cause that earthquake energy to release. And you often see linear cloud patterns before, a couple days before, or during a very notable earthquake. It doesn't happen every time, but it is a pretty strong correlation that observational evidence has shown. So we know that earthquakes are connected to the atmosphere, and we know that solar activity influences Earth's atmosphere, and we also know that galactic cosmic rays have a stronger correlation to altering the parameters of Earth's atmosphere, and we did have this big four bush decrease due to that great geomagnetic storm. And now we're seeing this big decrease in earthquakes, but that seismic stress and tectonic stress doesn't stop accumulating. It's not like the plates stop moving. They are always moving. So as that stress continues to build, eventually conditions are, they should eventually return to normal such that we see a rebound effect in the earthquakes that we're going to be having as a result. Either there's gonna be a higher frequency them or there's gonna be a higher magnitude to them, or that's gonna happen at the same time. We'll have higher magnitude earthquakes and a greater frequency of earthquakes across all the different magnitudes. So a very odd anomalous thing that we're seeing right now with this very big drop in earthquake frequency. I wanna go back to that data just to show it one more time. Look at that very significant drop. It's just odd because we haven't seen this across the other solar cycles. Uh, and solar cycle 24 was anomalously weak, and it looks like we're still dealing with the effects of that, paired now with new factors like that great G5 geomagnetic storm, and we have tons of solar activity right now. We've had a ton of solar activity in July. We set a record number of sunspots for solar cycle 25 in July, nearly hit 200, 196.5, and so this earthquake dynamic could continue for a while, the longer it stays depressed, I would hypothesize the stronger that rebound effect is going to be. So that's your Earth Energy update for you. My name again, Stefan Burns. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. It helps this channel grow. Subscribe to see more content like this. I hope you enjoyed that intro. I was just feeling a little goofy. Wanted to have a little bit of fun with the intro. It's also been very hot today in the apartment or else I would have uh, you know some sleeves on. but. I didn't want to just be sweating like crazy. So thank you all so much. Love and light. God bless. And I'll see you all in the next video.